December 29th, Tuesday, 1875. It is truly hard to believe that my youngest is just barely seven as of today. I found that Charlotte has read all the books in my public library and all the books that her mother has to offer. She's asked if she can read the books in my private study and I have decided to grant her access to all of them. As long as she does not damage a single one and puts them back how she found them. Charlotte even has asked about reading them aloud to me in order to help with speech and understanding words that she would not at first know. I do not see a problem with this as long as it doesn't interfere with my work. Speaking of... It seems as though she's taking an interest in that too. She often comes into my office and overlooks the papers that I have on my desk. Charlotte has even caught errors and made corrections from time to time. Her handwriting is quite diligent for a human of her age. I see now that she excels well in English. So I wonder how well she'd fare with finances, arithmetic, and mathematics. As a good amount of the books in my study are on those topics. From the sound of it, Charlotte has also taken to the horses in my stable and seems to want to learn to ride them. She is excelling in both art and English and taking a fascination to math and athletics. Perhaps she is the true prodigy of my children. January 25th. Monday, 1876. As it has become part of our routine, Charlotte was reading a book aloud to me. Though it hardly dawned on me at first how inappropriate the scenario had become in the eyes of most people. To me, it was all entirely innocent and an eventual learning experience the child would have to have. I was not taking sexual satisfaction in any of it, nor was I lumping it into that category. My child was simply reading a story to me. Though Charlotte had started to show signs that she realized what it all implies pretty fast. Charlotte was in my lap and the book she had was The Different Flowers in the Garden. She had been reading. I lean back, relax attitude, knowing that things would easily go my way, as Ava seemed ever so desiring to submit. Undo my breaches and... The child halted, seeming to be very aware of the situation unfolding in the book before her. F Father? I still had been dumbfounded to it and simply letting out a little, hmm. Is this book about? I immediately caught on to what she had. I simply answered, yes. Oh. The child's eyes became wide, and I could see her look at the illustrations on the next page with a hint of concern and confusion. Ah, oh, but your mare wouldn't approve. I knew that Lossie would throw quite a fit if she ever found something like this in Charlotte's possession. I thought on it for just a moment. Just don't tell her or read the book around her. The illustrations are enough to distress her. She innocently looked up at me, her eyebrows still curved down in a worried way. Okay. That's enough reading aloud for today, my chat. Perhaps with books like these, you should read them only to yourself. I understand, Vata. That is, unless you do not wish to read them at all. No, that's not it. I was just unsure. Normally it's not seen as ladylike to look at such things. I also do believe that people my age are not supposed to be so precocious on such matters. But if you are alright with it, then I think I would like to continue reading. I can still learn from this. Very true. But do know that most eroticas are not close to accuracy with these topics. It is a start, however, with understanding intercourse and those sorts of relationships. After all, modern humans tend to not want to teach about it, so they don't have academic books on such acts. I understand. Most fictions have not been close to real life either, so it would only make sense that the same applies. The child got off my lap, stood up to return to her little desk that I set up in the office for her. Charlotte continued to read, sating her curiosity, and I continued to do my work. So I hardly see the need for any concern of any connections to this being some perverse fantasy of mine. Children are much too unnerving to my senses and taste for that to even be considered. Morning, 1019, January 26th, 1876. I am sickened to my stomach. I cannot believe my eyes. After I got Charlotte up for the day, I found an erotic novel hidden under her pillow. I know exactly who gave it to her. The sick, 
bastard means to mold her for his vile fantasies and morbid games. I will not let him do as he pleases. January 26th, Tuesday, 1876. I'd been minding my own business when Lottie suddenly stormed into my room with a fiery attitude and destructive outlook. She meant to fight, and she believed herself to win. She started by yelling, You scoundrel! Lottie marched up to me, trying to capture my attention. What kind of books are you making Charlotte read? So she found out. I'm assuming Charlotte did not do so well to hide them. As she does strike me as a bladder. You're trying to fill her head with your perverse desires, aren't you? I wasn't in the mood to be lectured, nor was I feeling tolerant of Lottie's behavior. I reached an arm around her, gripping her hair with one hand as I placed the other against the back of her neck as I responded. How about I demonstrate? What? Her eyes widened in a state of alarmed shock. You asked what kinds of books? How about I demonstrate the kinds of books on you, my master? It'd be a lot easier and more fun than telling you. Don't touch me. Let me go. Lottie squirms from my embrace, though I kept her hair in my grasp, pulling her up from her loose locks in a way that made her face writhe in pain. Listen here, dumb hair. You do not get to scold me in my own manner. You also do not get to make assumptions. Look at where your last ones landed. Charlotte can do whatever she pleases with the books, and you are not to take them from her. I merely flung her from me. Now get out of my sight. Lossie looked at me with such bitter and hateful agony, but did not fight any further. She simply left, 